Ever been to the southern half of the United States and found yourself searching for a cup of coffee and plate of seriously greasy diner food at four in the morning? Well, if you have, chances are you've been to Waffle House. But how did this repository of hangover-absorbing food come to be? Today, we're going to take a look at the history of Waffle House. Before we get started, though, be sure to subscribe to the Weird History Food Channel. And after that, leave a comment and let us know what other classic eateries you'd like to hear about. Okay, one order of Weird History coming up. The first Waffle House was located at 2719 East College Avenue in Avondale Estates, Georgia, which is just about 10 miles outside of Atlanta. The diner, which would eventually spawn a massive franchise boasting over 2,000 locations in 25 states, opened its doors on Labor Day of 1955. The chain was founded by neighbors Joe Rogers Sr. and Tom Forkner. In 1947, Rogers started working as a short-order cook in New Haven, Connecticut, at a now-defunct national restaurant chain called Toddle House which sounds more like a daycare center than a place to smother and cover your hash browns. By 1949, he had worked his way up to regional manager, and soon after, he moved to Atlanta. Forkner, on the other hand, was a real estate agent, and just happened to be the man who sold Rogers his Atlanta home. The two became friends, and taking their cue from the rise of fast food restaurants like McDonald's, they decided to go into business together. What, doesn't everyone open a greasy spoon with their realtor? No, not really, no. Forkner suggested opening a toddle house, but Rogers didn't think it was right for the market. Instead, they started their own chain, which they named Waffle House. Why Waffle House? Well, in addition to the restaurant being a place where waffles lived, the two men figured putting waffle in the name would encourage customers to order them, and waffles were the most expensive item on the menu. The name was Forkner's idea, and for those wondering, the International House of Pancakes didn't open until 1958. So sorry, Pancakes, this is the house that Waffles built. Rogers suggested keeping the place open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. It proved to be a stroke of genius, and late-night dining for drunk college kids and hungry fugitives hasn't been the same since. Since their mission is always to be open, Waffle Houses are prepared for pretty much anything nature can throw at them. The syrup must flow. Locations are equipped with portable generators in case the area loses power, and the company routinely studies its responses to previous disasters to learn how they can do better next time. They do this because it helps their employees keep earning wages at times when they probably need the most, and in many areas, Waffle House is a place of refuge for the community when things get tough, kind of like the Helm's Deep of the American South. To underscore how seriously Waffle House takes disaster response, FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Agency, has devised a scale called the Waffle House Index to measure the severity of natural disasters. No, seriously, this is really a thing. The federal government actually grades disasters on a Waffle House scale. How does it work? Well, a code green means everything is A-OK, -okay, Waffle House is open and dishing out the grits. Code yellow, however, indicates that not all is well. Waffle House is serving a limited menu and may have even lost power. But it's not quite time to panic either. Code red means it's absolutely time to panic. Waffle House is closed and the area is in desperate need of assistance and scrambled eggs. With over 2,000 locations in perpetual operation, it doesn't take a math whiz to calculate that Waffle House serves a ridiculous amount of food. How ridiculous? Well, if you were to take all the sausage patties served by Waffle House in a single day and stack them on top of each other, the resulting tower would be four times the height of New York's Empire State Building, and twice as tall as Burj Khalifa in Dubai, which is the world's tallest building. Okay, but what about bacon, you ask? Yeah, what about it? Waffle House serves 25,000 miles of bacon a year. That's literally enough bacon to wrap around the entire planet Earth. Mmm, bacon-wrapped planet. They serve enough coffee per year to fill eight Olympic swimming pools. And since 1955, they've cooked over 2.5 billion eggs and served 1.8 billion orders of hash browns. And speaking of hash browns... Waffle House has been around for decades, and like we said, they've sold a lot of hash browns. So many that the chefs have developed a unique language to describe all the options. Using this lingo, if a customer wants their hash browns with sautéed onions, they'd ask for them to be smothered. If they want melted cheese, they ask for the browns to be covered. Peppers would get them jalapeno peppers, capped means grilled mushrooms, diced means grilled tomatoes, topped means chili, country means sausage gravy, and chunked would yield hickory smoked ham. And if a customer wants everything, they ask for browns all the way with some defibrillator paddles on the side. 
If this sounds like a lot to remember, don't worry, it's all in the menu. It's like the Rosetta Stone of delicious fried potatoes. You might think the hash brown language is the only unusual form of communication Waffle House uses, but you'd be wrong, all the way wrong. Servers at Waffle House are trained to relay their orders to the chefs using something called the mark system. Rather than use verbal cues or written tickets, this system entails using items like utensils, pickles, slices of bread, and condiment packets to signal chefs about what they need to cook next without anyone having to say or read a single word. For example, a packet of grape jelly tells a chef the server needs an order of white toast. A mustard packet facing up on a plate calls for a pork chop, and a butter packet indicates the server needs a waffle. Seems pretty simple, right? Well, it's not. Because details like the position and orientation of the item could completely change its meaning. Take that grape jelly. By itself, it means toast. But place it on the right side of the plate, and it suddenly means a sausage omelet. Place a packet of mayo on top, and it means well-scrambled eggs. Having your own spy language is useful for conveying orders quickly in the middle of a big rush. Plus, it's just kind of cool. I don't know. So while the whole bit about staying open during disasters to help their employees in the community paints a pretty altruistic picture, there is a darker side to the Waffle House experience. Between 1995 and 2000 alone, Waffle House was the subject of no less than 90 different lawsuits, alleging sexual harassment or making claims of racist practices. That, uh, seems like too many. Things got so bad in 2018, Martin Luther King Jr.'s daughter, Bernice King, called for customers to boycott Waffle House, which is a pretty bad look for a biscuit hut. Waffle House co-founder Joe Rogers Sr. went on the record in 2004, saying he didn't believe the business was racist. He also pointed out that Waffle House had served black civil rights protesters in the 1960s, when many other Atlanta-area businesses were denying them service. Nonetheless, decades of allegations made the problem a difficult one to ignore. In addition to allegations of bad business practices, Waffle House also seems to have a little problem with fights. Which, of course it does. It would be weird if people weren't fighting at Waffle House. Fights break out at Waffle House more often than the UFC octagon. In fact, Waffle House fight compilations have grown into its own mini-genre on YouTube, along with Chuck E. Cheese. Something about cheap and plentiful food makes people want to throw hands. Waffle House has thousands of locations that are open until the wee hours of the morning, which is like a bug lamp for rowdy drunks. Waffle House is also infamous for being the center of some seriously disturbing crimes. For example, there are numerous instances of belligerent customers getting naked and punching someone in the face. You can't throw a decent punch with your clothes on, it restricts your mobility. Several locations have also seen employees spike their co-workers' drinks with meth, and multiple people have been fatally shot at Waffle House. Despite the allure of a midnight skillet breakfast, after-hours trips to Waffle House can get dangerous. So be careful out there, folks. Sure, plenty of Waffle Houses have a jukebox, but did you know Waffle House has its own record label? Back in the mid-1980s, Joe Rogers Sr. decided that the chain should be putting out its own tunes. It's unclear how he came to this conclusion. Maybe the musical sizzling of bacon on the grill? Whatever the reason, Rogers Sr. founded Waffle Records. The label released its first song, Waffle House Family, by Mary Welch Rogers in 1985, and its first music video, Bert, named for an employee who made great chili in 2008. There should be more classic pop songs about great chili. All of the songs on Waffle Records reference food in some way or another. The 1950s pop music styled tune There Are Raisins in My Toast by Danny Jones is a pretty typical example, but despite the food references, they're not commercial jingles. They're legitimate songs in popular musical genres like rock, gospel, and bluegrass. It's like if Weird Al made an entire concept album around his favorite diner. And unless you were listening closely, you might not even notice the songs were Waffle House originals. The company originally made 45 records. For our Gen Z fans, those are the little 7-inch discs, the baby records. Those records would then be stocked in jukeboxes at Waffle Houses across the country. Today, the songs still play from jukeboxes, but they're recorded and distributed digitally, because progress eventually comes to even the greasiest of spoons. If you're wondering whether Waffle Records is looking to produce a smash hit, the answer is no, even though they totally could. Who can't relate to a melodious love of breakfast? According to representatives of the label, if anyone wants to play it, that's great, but it's all about inside the restaurant. 
Over the years, Waffle House has had some pretty impressive celebrity guests singing its praises. Uh, not literally. To date, nobody has done guest vocals on Waffle Records. For example, while you'd probably figure sophisticated foodie types wouldn't appreciate something as basic as Waffle House, celebrity chef Anthony Bourdain was actually a fan. Bourdain contextualized the pure Americana of Waffle House, saying, "...it's warm, yellow glow, a beacon of hope and salvation, inviting the hungry, the lost, the seriously hammered, all across the South to come inside, a place of safety and nourishment." He was truly a poet. Waffle House is also wildly popular among the hip-hop community. Jay-Z, Future, Gucci Mane, and 2 Chainz have all made references to the diner in their lyrics. And Ludacris and Lil Baby are on record as loving the patty melt. And in January 2015, Kim Kardashian and Kanye West shared a table at an Atlanta Waffle House with Chrissy Teigen and John Legend. Tom Forkner and Joe Rogers founded Waffle House together, but that's not the only thing they had in common. Both men lived well into their late 90s and died within one month of each other. Rogers headed off for the Great Waffle House in the Sky in March of 2017, and Forkner joined him a month later in April. Both men remained involved with the company right up until they paid their final check. The fast food chain they created remains a beacon to hungry souls wandering the night in search of chow and is believed to generate over a billion dollars a year in revenue. It's also known for doing right by its employees. Waffle House is famous for promoting from within, offering stock options to employees, paying cooks bonuses for the amount of food they prepare, and giving their employees health insurance, which is all but unheard of in the fast food biz. Their very first establishment in Avondale Estates, Georgia, has been restored to its original appearance and converted into a Waffle House museum. Visitors can book tours to see over six decades of Waffle House memorabilia on display. If you decide to go, be warned. That particular location no longer serves food, which presumably means there are slightly fewer fistfights. So, what do you think? What's your favorite menu item at Waffle House? Let us know in the comments below, and while you're at it, check out some of these other Weird History food videos.